Shout out to all of the wonderful patrons of The Nerdy Narrative. Thank you so much for your generosity. If you're interested in joining to support the channel and help pick the books that I read, the link is in the description below. What up nerds? Welcome to the channel. My name is Leslie and today on The Nerdy Narrative, this is my weekly reads video just where I talk about all of the things that I've read for the last week, just sharing any insights, highlights, mini reviews. So whether you're looking for your next read or you're just curious about what I'm reading and this is the perfect video to do that. Before I talk about what all I read, I just want to give a quick reminder about the audiobook giveaway for the first three books in the post-apocalyptic horror series, The Nightmare Land Chronicle. I have talked with Daniel. He did confirm it on my video last week. The codes are good for US and the UK. So don't forget to leave a comment that you want to be entered in this giveaway. I'm going to be selecting a winner on October 25th. That way you'll have them in plenty of time to listen during the week of Halloween and just feed into those spooky vibes. In addition to commenting that you would like to be entered into the giveaway. You must also be following the author Daniel Barnett on Instagram. That's the only social media platform that he uses. That is going to be how he is going to send you the codes for your audiobooks. I'll have Daniel's Instagram handle linked in the description below along with a link to his website so you can learn more about him there. Now let's talk about all of the things that I have been reading over the last week. The first book that I finished this week is The Fury of the Gods. This is the powerful final installment into the Bloodsworn saga, the Norse inspired fantasy trilogy by John Gwynn. Holy smokes, y'all, this is a 500 plus page epic tale of nothing but pure payoff. So if you've read the first two novels and you remember what happened, just so many things, so many character arcs that are just so well written. You know these characters, you know their motivations, you know why they're doing the things they do, whether they're a good guy or whether they're a villain. There were so many subplots to this book. And when I tell you that the payoff is there in the final one, Oh my gosh. You want to talk about a book that's going to get your heart rate up, make your blood pound. I mean, I almost felt like I was about to sweat at one point. So, so good. I'm going to have a review come out next week. I've got to get all of my final notes together. So good. As always, John Gwynn just knows how to deliver to his fans. And my goodness, this was so good. I can't wait to reread the whole series. I just want to be able to experience it or I can read it back to back. I really wanted to do that before I dived into the third book, but time just got away from me. There is a recap involved. There's an extensive character list. So it'll tickle your memory, get you back in the flow of this world. And it is so worth it. And in talking about the fear of the gods. I read the digital arc on NetGalley. Huge thank you to NetGalley and Orbit, by the way, for approving me for that. So reading a digital copy means what? I read it on a e-reader, my Kindle. Did y'all see the announcement that there are three updated Kindles and then a new Kindle? Kindle has finally come out with a color version. Kobo has been cornering the market, in my opinion, on the color e-readers. I've been holding out, hoping for a Kindle. They finally released it on October 16th. Well, for pre-order. I believe it releases on October 30th. The Kindle Paperwhite got an update. Kindle Basic got an update. Actually, Kindle Paperwhite got two. There was like an update to the Basic Paperwhite and then there's a signature edition. But my goodness, y'all, I am so excited to see what these Kindle colors are going to look like. Are they perfect? No. Are they going to be as vibrant as looking at a comic or manga on your iPad? No. But is it going to be easier on your eyes, cause you less eye strain, and prevent you from getting headaches because you're older? I think so. I'm going to try one. I'm going to trade in my Kindle Scribe on this one. You get a credit and then there was something else, had some chase points. I'm going to check it out, see what I think. I'll do an unboxing and talk about it if y'all are interested in that. Moving on with my next finished read, which was The Fall of the Giants by Gregory Contaxis. Okay, I am so glad that this author made me fall in love with this narrative style of tell, don't show. And that really is a horrible way to describe this. This is storytelling 
meant to be told orally. That's why I would really recommend immersion reading this with the audiobook, not just because I really love the narrator, but because the way that it's written, it just sounds so much better orally. I like to immersion read anyway. I always have the audiobook going, yep. either the physical or the digital copy. That's just my preferred method. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have trouble just getting my brain to stop thinking about 10,000 other things when I'm just sitting down to get started in my book. Having the audiobook in addition to reading with my eyes really helps me to do that. Plus it helps me to immerse better in the story, especially when it has an amazing narrator. So funny story, when I read the first book in the Dance of Light series, I didn't really vibe with that style. I'm like, man, this is a whole lot of dialogue and not a whole lot of moving around. And my initial knee jerk reaction was, I don't really like that. But then as I thought about it and was talking about the book with others, I'm like, wait a minute, actually, I sound like I really did enjoy this a whole lot more than I did. And I just got to thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I love gossip. Who doesn't love gossip? And how does gossip work? Somebody is telling you the story and it's all usually a little bit of what they saw and then what other people have said. It's like, oh, well, so-and-so did this and then come to find out it's because this, this, and this. That's exactly how this works. You're getting the story of everything that is happening in Elmore and Night Dorn, and you're getting it from all the different characters of the story. So you flip to here and it's like, okay, here's where we left off in The Return of the Night. Elliot's going here, Eleanor's going here, John the long arm is going here, and someone's going here. And then you're just getting the dialogue of the conversations that are happening in these different places. So much political intrigue. I was torn in this one because it was so matter of fact and the characters are intelligent and I'm like going, nobody's fooling anybody. Everybody's calling everybody on their bullshit. And I'm like, man, there's just no drama. But then there were some very surprising, unexpected things that happened where people did end up getting fooled. And then I was thinking about it. Okay, a lot of these people have been rulers in some capacity for a long time. They know how to play the game. They know how crafty they need to be and the part they need to play in order to pull the wool over somebody else's eyes. And when I sat back and thought about it like that, I was like, okay, that's really clever. And I really enjoyed that aspect. So if you can't tell, I really enjoyed The Fall of the Giants. Another review that I'm gonna sit down and work on and have that up soon for you on the channel. The Dance of Light series is a Greek mythology inspired fantasy epic. The way that it's written, it has that beautiful classic fantasy style to it that I think you will really enjoy. And I cannot recommend the audiobooks enough for this series. Definitely check them out on Audible. Guy Barnes is the narrator who is just top tier. Moving into my current reads, I started the audiobook for Necroscope by Brian Lumley. This is a horror series about vampires and necromancers and necroscopes. A necroscope is someone who can talk to the dead. The dead will converse with them willingly, whereas a necromancer usually forces the dead to talk to them. It is such a great series. I forgot how much I enjoyed it. The first book in the series, in my opinion, is the weakest. It's a big book of setup and information. It's another style like The Fall of the Giants where there's a whole lot of tell, don't show, and it's done through dialogue. But again, this narrator, James Langston, is wonderful. I don't believe I've ever listened to anything narrated by him, that he's got that British accent. It just fits with the story really well. It's brought this story to life in a completely different way that is making this reread even more enjoyable, even though I knew this was a book I enjoyed. I had the first eight books in mass market paperback is how I first collected and read the series. 
love those covers. Not so much a fan of the current covers, but I donated them when we moved from Mississippi to Florida, but I own all of them. Well, the first eight on Kindle. I fell off with the series at book eight. Had no idea there's eight more books in the series. So I am thinking I'm gonna keep going with the series, reread the first eight, and then follow through with the second half of the series. This is a accidental buddy read I fell into. My friend Nico from Nico's Book Reviews was talking about reading next microscope as part of a experiment that he's doing where he's reading books outside of his comfort zone and this is one one of his longtime viewers has recommended many many times. He finally decided to read it and I thought can I resist not reading this book with him? And I was like no and then Andrew's Wizardly Reads joined in as well as Trend from Portable Magic. I'm going to have all of their channels linked below so you can catch any mention of the series if you're a fan like I am. I can't wait to see what they think. I have predicted that Andrew is going to DNF this book, uh, but he will definitely DNF the series if he makes it to book two. I know Andrew and I have talked recently and he mentioned his reading tastes have changed. They haven't changed this much. If you've read the series, you know exactly what I'm probably talking about that's going to turn him off from the series. So I can't wait to find out if he's going to like it or not. The other book that I started and fell in love with before I even finished chapter one is A Betrayal of Storms by Ben Alderson. This is a fantasy romance. It's a fae fantasy romance. I've been so excited to read it because I thought, you know what, if I love it, I'm going to try some of these other fae romances that are so popular all over book talk and Instagram, just any social media platform where they talk about books, really, the Sarah J. Maas one. There's not been any of the romance yet. I'm a few chapters in, I think four or five. I think I've identified who the love interest may be. I'm not quite sure, but this book has been so good. Look, if you have somebody getting throat punched in chapter one, you're gonna have a fan in me. One of the things that I say very often when I'm playing games is, I'm gonna punch you in the throat or the other one that I am most famous for saying is I'm about to cut a fool. So I fell in love with this book immediately. There's a lot of really fun humor from the point of view of our main character, Robin Vale. It just pulled me right in. The first chapter was action. And then all of a sudden in chapter two, we've got mystery and intrigue that's been introduced. I cannot wait to sit down and read more of this one today. That's going to bring me to what's next on the TBR. So my patron pick of the month for October is House of Leaves. This is going to be quite an experience. It looks so weird. I don't think this is one that I'm just going to be able to sit and consume in chunks like I normally do when I read. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this one and just maybe read a few pages a day. I don't know how this is going to work. I am so confused. I mean, what the hell? We have almost two pages of writing that's just been marked out. What does that mean? So I think this one's going to take me quite a while. I don't even expect to finish it in the month of October. I should have really looked at it a little sooner in the month and started it probably on October 1 and just read throughout the month. So I am going to get started on this one. I think this is going to be my wake up and read with my first cup of coffee when I'm most alert to see if I can let this sink in or even understand what is going on here. I'll also be starting the arc for the new new one that is coming out by Marshall Carp. Don't tell me how to die. This one comes out November 5th. I want to get this one read so I can have a review go up on November 5th at the latest so I can let you guys know what I think. Reading the synopsis, I think this is going to be a comedy murder mystery. Not sure. I've not read Marshall Cart before, so I'm really excited to give a new author a try. Read this one for y'all, tell you all about it. But this one's going to be out by Blackstone Publishing November 5th. I'll have it linked in the description below so you can check out what the book description says about it. If this is an author you haven't read before, or if you're already a fan of Marshall Carp and you didn't know he had a new one, now you do. The other book that I'm going to put here on the TBR, it's been here for a while now, is The Land of, wow, if just, that had been an X, I would have been dead. I would just cut myself. The Land of the Living and the Dead is the third and final installment of the Gale Song trilogy by Shauna Lawless. <sighs> this is one of those times where I am so excited to have something new to read in this world. This is an Irish mythology folklore fantasy series. 
I want to know what happens really, really badly, but this is also one that I do not want to end. So I'm struggling with picking it up because I hate to say goodbye when I really love the series. I hate to say goodbye. But I also see so many of my friends reading it and loving it. I know I'm going to love it. I want to talk to them about it, especially Heidi. So I will absolutely be getting started on this one in the next few days. This is another series that I just feel is enriched by its narrator. She is outstanding. Though I did not listen to the audiobook for book two. I had the arc and I read it early. I believe it has three narrators and I believe those same three narrators are going to be returning for this one. So I'm excited to hear how that works. And then the only other thing I've been up to this week, I watched a lot of TV. My husband and I finished Bad Monkey, which is based on a novel that I have put a hold on at my library. This is a comedy drama starring Vince Vaughn. He's a former detective who has been relegated to a food inspector and lives in the Florida Keys, but finds himself embroiled in a murder investigation anyway. Amazing series. Vince Vaughn does a wonderful job. I'm so curious to see if I'm going to like the book better, but in any case, I'm glad that I watched the show first because I'm such a book snob. If I read the book first, I'm just sitting there criticizing the whole time. I hope that this is a series that gets renewed. I want to see more. And then I also finished season four of Slow Horses that stars Gary Oldman. Oh my goodness. This is about a branch of the British intelligence MI5. It's a handful of agents that have made a very large mistake of some sort and they get relegated to Slough House, which is where Gary Oldman works. It's so funny. It's also really intriguing. I absolutely adore the series. My friend Gail recommended the series to me. I started it and binged straight through, got right up in the middle of season four and have already finished it. Just cannot recommend that one enough. Another viewer was really cool to find my review of Sweet Pea by CJ Skuse. This is a book about a girl who sort of accidentally becomes a serial killer. Complete accident, but it's really funny at the same time. They made a show about it. I can't remember which of the streaming platforms it's on. I think it's Netflix. And the actress who plays the main character is the same one that was Lucy in Fallout. So I was like, okay, let's give this a try. The first episode, I was not convinced that they were going to do a good job on the show. The reason why is so far, the only thing about the first episode that is in line with the books are the characters' names and it has Rhiannon's dog Tink in it. Everything else is different. The book opens up, she's living with her boyfriend and her dog Tink in an apartment. The show opens up, she's been living with her father, she's single, and her father dies. And I'm going, how is this going to be set up to follow the book series? I don't know. I'm going to give it one more episode to see if they can pull it off. But my initial reaction is, no, it's going to suck. They're going to ruin it. Remember what I just said about if I read the books first, I usually don't like the show. There you go. That's a good example. A surprising hit show for me, I really didn't think I was going to like this one, is the new Penguin show. I was a huge fan of the show Gotham. Loved the characters. Loved what they did with the characters. And when I saw that this was going to be a show about the Penguin, Colin Farrell was going to play Penguin, I was like going, no way, this is not going to work. <gasps> it's so good. I loved it. There's four episodes out already, so y'all can get caught up on it's it. It's such an interesting character study of the Penguin. Now, are they going to include some of the other villains? I don't know. I think the Riddler is the only one that's been mentioned so far. I don't think Batman has been mentioned in any capacity or even the Joker. Just 
the Riddler at this point. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with it, how they're going to progress. But I'm also really enjoying the deep dive into the Penguin's storyline, which if you did watch Gotham, it's lining up pretty well with that. So it's going to feel familiar, but more information. So really enjoying that one. And then the only other show I have been watching is, of course, The Starting Five on Netflix. This is a show that apparently these filmmakers followed around the 23-24 NBA season of LeBron James, Anthony Edwards, Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler, and Sabonis. I can't remember how to say his first name. I always mess it up. I watched the first episode of that one last night. Had a good time with it. Looking forward to continuing it. And just knowing how the season ended for all of these cats, I can't wait to see the journey. My hope is there's going to be a lot of moments that they play when these guys were mic'd up on the courts. Just getting to hear some of the things that they're saying to the other characters. Characters. Can you tell I am a bookworm? Other players. Excited to continue on with that docu-series. There is another one coming out that I believe just is about the Celtics and y'all know I'm going to be all over that. Oh my goodness. One more of these and I will get to go to my first game of the year. The Magic is going to be playing the Pacers. I have tickets. I'm going. Can't wait to go see my boys. And yes, you heard that right. I am not just a fan of the Celtics. I also love the Orlando Magic. And then I just watch whoever else that I can because after that, it's the love of the game. It's the love of the players. There are certain players that I just love to watch even if they're on a team I don't like. I'm gonna wrap it up there before I fall off the deep end talking about basketball with you all. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next week. Thanks again to all of the Nerdy Narrative patrons with a special shout out to the Nerds Radiant. Chad, John, Gail, Amanda, Star, Tara, Anne, Amanda, Andrew, Kate, Ev, and Sharon.